This is the Yuri Kamome line, which starts in Shinbashi, and this is the monorail that will take you to the Tokyo International Pen Show. While I'll tell you the specifics about the show, I'll show you scenes of the trip out there and the building that houses the show. Here's the ticketing and the wicket gates. The Tokyo International Pen Show, or TIPS, 2020 was held on the 6th, 7th, and 8th of November, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. One of the COVID procedures to mitigate the spread of the virus was on the 6th, only 100 people were allowed to visit. There were only 61 vendors, so that was a really nice ratio. You had to buy your ticket online and got a QR code, and all sales of the show ink were also bought online. On Saturday and Sunday, they had three two-hour blocks in which 200 people could come on each of the two-hour blocks. And then they had to leave, and then there was a 30-minute kind of rest period between the blocks. Of course, everyone had to wear a mask, and I was a volunteer. One of my jobs was to check everyone's temperature, so you had to have a normal temperature. And the exhibitors had to wear a mask and a face shield. The Tokyo Port City building is a very new building and the ventilation in the conference rooms themselves changes out the air every 16 minutes. With the precautions in place, I felt safe, especially with the numbers in Japan being significantly lower than in other places. They even pared down the number of meetings for the volunteers to one and you could do it on Zoom if you preferred. We've arrived at Takashiba Station and it's just a short little walk to the building. You leave directly from the station exit across two bridges past this hotel into the second floor of the building. The building itself is called the Tokyo Port City Takeshiba and the conference rooms are located on the second floor with the Tokyo Metropolitan Industrial Trade Center. It's a beautiful building with plenty of restaurants, coffee shops, convenience stores, and outdoor seating and gardens. This is shot coming from the station to the building. I'm gonna show you some scenes of the building while I explain to you why coming to the Tokyo Pen Show really is a great idea if you decide to come and visit Tokyo. First off, if you come in November, you'll get to see the show. Secondly, I think November is the best time to visit Tokyo. It's nice and crisp and cool and you only need a light jacket. At the end of the year, because of New Year's, plane tickets are expensive. January and February are miserably cold. And in the spring, the tickets go back up because of the blooming of the Sakura in Golden Week. The beginning of summer is rainy season, and at the end of summer, it's very hot, and August is the most expensive time to travel in Japan because that's the only time the kids are off of school. But November is perfect. The prices are great and the weather's even better. So now that I've convinced you to come, let's head into the building. Here's a sign that tells you to wear a mask, have your temperature taken, and use hand sanitizer. There's hand sanitizer at all the doors and these little spots where you can lock away your umbrella. I've forgotten countless umbrellas in these things. Show setup was smooth. The conference room was modern and easy to set up. Look at these giant elevators to bring our stuff in. We set up an entrance to process the QR code that served as your ticket. And set up easy distribution for the show goodies for the attendees. One of the nice things about volunteering in Japan is they always feed you well. And tips was no exception. We all got these really nice bento box lunches, which has rice and different kinds of accoutrements, and then green tea to drink. Looks pretty yummy. The mascot of the show, as in last year, were these penguins. In the background, you can see someone's backpack, and there were several people that were lined up early, even though there were only going to be 100 people. There must have been something special they wanted to get. The motto this year was Mayor Ink Christmas and Hap Pen New Year. The Japanese just love wordplay. The show ink also capitalized on the Christmas theme. 
the top of the box says Tokyo International Pen Show 2020. The front says Christmas Carol 1843 by Tips 2020. And the side says first published on December 19, 1843 was when it was published by Charles Dickens. And the opposite side says A Christmas Carol is a novel by Charles Dickens. The inside leaflet has a quote from the book which includes saying, in disease and sorrow, there is nothing in the world so irresistibly contagious as laughter and good humor. I think this is a nod to our COVID problems. The ink is a deep red with a little bit of a green undertone and some green shading. Now let's check out some of the vendors in the show. Here's an overview of the venue, and this is pretty much well as crowded as it got on Friday. Ah, Nitoru returned this year. They're the original makers of these crab pen holders. Apparently there have been copies of these wildly popular crab pen holders. But this is the original maker. I've been wanting one since last year, but I didn't have enough time to run back and get one. They also have these little kitty cats. Furuta is a newcomer to tips. They make fountain pens made out of wood and ebonite. They also make leather pen cases for these beautiful pens and accessories like this leather pen holder. The killer is he also makes all their nibs. This is a display of their different kinds and this is one of his ebonite pens with a giant nib. I didn't get to spend much time with them, but I hope to see them back next year as his pens were really beautiful. Sean Design is popular in Japan with its minimalist design and beautiful colors. I had watched a Japanese video on tips and the guy was really impressed with the different kinds of colors and the fact that it was made out of aluminum. There were really no other pens like this at the show and I haven't seen any other pens like this in the pen stores here in Tokyo besides Sean Designs pens. Another newcomer to the show is Matsuda Makie collection. They had a gorgeous assortment of different kinds of Makie. Interestingly, they also had Makie rocks. I had asked her what kind of rocks they were and she just kind of looked at me and said, rocks. They also had gorgeous Makie boxes. Here's one with butterflies and a Raden finial. Here's a 3776 with a Raden domed finial and a kind of raised gold flower work. And then Raden around the end of the cap and then Raden on the end cap. Here's another 3776 with this stunning chrysanthemum pattern. It'll set you back a cool $7,000. This booth was called Inta Acto, even though the English says Acme. They had imported ink from Taiwan called Maku Ake, and then ink called SKB. I believe this was their first official showing in Japan. Of course, I had to try some of it out. I got a bottle of theirs called Violet. Name wasn't written anywhere in English on the box and I had to figure it out from the kanji. Well, at least I think it's called Violet. An interesting thing is that the ink bottle came sealed underneath the cap. So I thought I would check it out to see if it was a real seal by holding the bottle upside down over my table. Not smart, but it worked. It's a soft, medium purple. You can see it here in a fine line. The famed Mr. Nagahara, the nib shaper, was there basically talking people through Zoom on what he had done to their nib. I was trying not to videotape any customers' faces, so I have no film of this. But the nib shaper always shows with Kyo Maru which is a gentleman that makes different kinds of silver filigree for stationary supplies. Here is a rocker blotter. 
and a Sailor Prophet 21 with sterling silver filigree. This will set you back about $800. And here's a silver filigree bottle cap cover that covers the cap to the Nib Shapers ink and a sterling silver filigree stapler. Of course, the famed Ebonite pen maker Eboya was there. Their Nico Ebonite pens are shined to such a high gloss, my camera really can't capture that. Sometimes you'll see one of the salespeople shining up the pens with a rouge cloth. As one of their specials for their show, they had this monster sized pen with an 18 karat gold size 8 nib that you could order. Bungu Box probably had the most popular pen there, their Twinkle Stardust. Of course it was Twinkle Stardust with glitter. It's a dark blue, recently sought after Sailor Pro Gear Mini with a 21 karat gold nib with a beautiful star pattern on it. As of Thanksgiving weekend, I believe they have one or two left on their website. They have their assortment of colorful sailors, their special pen, the Mangata, along with a variety of papers and stationary items, and then their own inks that come in their high heel model. Kami Terrier was here, and they're also at Inkanuma and the Bungu Joshi Haku Big Stationery Show. They had a few interesting new papers they brought out for this show, but their real uh, fun stuff came out on the stationery show that I went to this past weekend, which I'll show in the next video. They introduced more of their transparent fountain pen friendly vellum type paper. These have cats on them. This is kind of their paper sampler. It's called Paper Treasure, and it comes with some blotting paper and a guideline, an OK Fool's Cap, Bank Paper, Tomoa River, Speaker Bond, and something called COC. And Sugar White is their white colored paper that has different kinds of printed vellum paper that's fountain pen friendly. Here's one with dots, and we'll do a quick writing sample. You can see the writing on the other side, but it's not bleed through or anything. It's just because it's like vellum-like paper. Their Suke Suke memo pad is also kind of a sampler of five different papers that I've never really heard of before. And some of them are really strange. Some of them almost feel like uh, material. And, and there's one kind that feels like it's like wax paper. Some of these have varying degrees of fountain pen friendliness. Um, there's a little bit of like spread and it's not really feathering but spread in some of, some of them. This one here worked out really well and this is kind of the wax paper one. A little bird told me that they may be in talks with Shigude Inks to be able to bring some of this paper to people outside of Japan. I highly encouraged him to do so. Stilo Art Karuizawa was there with their beautiful wood pens and urushi pens. Jacob and CY did a live broadcast of the Friday portion of the event. The audio recording is posted on their Tokyo Inklings podcast channel. It was an interesting and fun broadcast and I'll leave a link to it in the description box. I'm going to take a quick mid-roll ad break and be back with a new type of dip pen. Drill Log was so new that they don't even have an online presence and they applied to be in the show just the week before. They're a company that manufactures aircraft parts in Gifu Prefecture. Their name is a combination of drill and dialogue. And what these are are metal dip pens where the nib itself is stainless steel and almost looks like a drill bit. They come in both 0.5 and 0.8 nib widths. And you basically buy a barrel body that can either accommodate one nib or two nibs. And then you buy the nibs separately. 
Each of these nibs come with these complicated deep grooves that holds an enormous amount of ink. When I was testing out the pen, the salesman had dipped his pen in some ink and was in the process of making straight lines across a standard piece of paper. And he filled the whole piece of paper and still had more ink left over. I didn't purchase one because you had to purchase the body and the nib separately and the cheapest option you could have gotten would have set you back about $250 and now I really regret not getting it. Writing with it distinctly felt different from a normal dip pen or a glass nib pen. I hope to see them in next year's show. Tududia, which is run by Takayuki-san, makes these long, slender, ebonite pens that have beautiful inserts of both acrylic and wood. This pen here has an insert of wood but also it has a pilot nib and that's what made these pens kind of a standout as the different kinds of nibs he put in the pens. As with all the vendors I'll put his information in the description box. Watanabe Seihon or Watanabe Bookbinding is the company that makes the Nanami 7 Seas Tomo River journals. They also make the Crossfield, which is pretty much well the same journal for the Japanese public, except the proprietor told me that they use less paper because the Japanese prefer a little bit thinner journal. I don't have a lot of film about them because a Japanese TV channel was filming me and I was a little nervous. My Japanese has a lot to be desired. They also make this ink cataloging system called Ink Log. And the nice thing about it is they're like ink swatch cards, but they're all kept together in like a little journal. Wrap Palette was one of the many interesting paper companies they had at TIPS this year. This is a kind of ombre or shaded stationery that shows up through the envelope. This is a card where you punch out an insert and then follow the instructions to make a paper crane. Even I was able to do it. They had these cards that you could take them apart and then they kind of became like paper Legos and you could build stuff with it. And they sold these giant blocks of papers called pallets and they were all fountain pen friendly. Himekuri, which is pretty much well known as the Sticky Paper People, have been at pretty much well all the stationery shows this year and were at TIPS last year too. They've won awards for their Sticky Paper calendars, which I'll show in a little more detail in a moment. A popular item of theirs is their masking tape case. Of course I have one. Where else would I put all my washi tape? Their weekly calendar system is basically a sticky for each separate day of the week. All of these days have sticky stuff all the way down to the bottom except for the very end so that you could peel it off. One of the uses for these is for expiration dates. You can peel off the expiration date of something and then stick it on the product so you'll remember. Another use is if you're reading a book and you want to mark what date that you read to a certain section, you can just stick the sticky on there. Many people who journal complain that the journal size isn't how much they write, but with these stickies, you can just peel off the day that you're writing, put the sticky on there, write as much as you want, and then you start the next day with a new sticky. That way you can kind of have a uniform look to your journal. Many of these sticky calendars come in a set with a booklet. This booklet is about stationery stores here in Japan. It was done in collaboration with the many stationery and pen stores throughout Japan. This is a map of the stores that participated in this. Inside is a picture in the name of the store, a short description of the store, and two QR codes. 
There is also a small map in the right hand corner to show you how to get to the store from the nearest train station. At the top you can put your sticky for the day that you visited the store up in the corner and there's some free space for you to write your impressions of the store. When you call up the QR code on your phone for the top QR, it takes you to a video of the inside of the store. The bottom QR code just gives you more information on the store. Probably one of the more influential small pen and stationery stores is Bungukan Kobayashi. This is one of their katana inks called Red Russet. I've never bothered with buying this ink because every time I see it is always completely sold out. They probably had the largest collection of katana inks I've ever seen in one place at Tips. Their katana red russet is a kind of blue-black with a red shimmer. And their emerald katana ink is kind of pretty much well the same color with a green shimmer. Does this nib look a little funny to you? At a different angle, you can tell it's a Fuda nib, but what makes this one different is two things. One, it's the Fuda nib made by a nibmeister that's very popular here in Japan that I'm not supposed to name. Apparently, it's because it's a platinum nib, but this nibmeister appeared earlier in this video. And the second is that this Fuda nib is done on a soft medium nib. This is Bungukan Kobayashi's collaboration with Platinum on a 3776 called a Kawasemi C. Kawasemi means kingfisher, as in the bird. And as Bungukan Kobayashi tends to set a lot of trends, I think the trend for multicolor caps or finials or end caps or barrels is going to continue because they did this pen this way. I typically don't like food and nibs so much, but this one blew me away. On food and nibs, you can make thicker and thicker lines as you angle the pen more and more flat because you end up using more of that that kind of bent up part. But this nib is pretty amazing. First off, reverse writing was the smoothest I've ever seen on any pen. I normally don't like to reverse write, but I wrote paragraphs with this. And then secondly, you can also get thicker lines by pressing harder. This line looks almost like I did it with a pilot parallel. Granted, it was right after I had inked the pen, but it's pretty amazing. Everything I've written on this page was done with one nib from the reverse writing all the way up to angling the pen down or pressing harder or angling the pen down and pressing harder. This curved stroke here is very important in Japanese writing and this thick to thinner part is used in kanji a lot and it is much easier with this pen being able to press down a little bit and then let up and have that little wispy ending. There's a reason why Bungukan Kobayashi is such a trendsetter. Yamamoto Paper came with two new really interesting products. One was their Takasago Premium Bank Paper. Their other was their Cosmo Note. The Cosmo Note is a journal made from Cosmo Airlight Paper. Yamamoto Paper organized a kind of uh, paper contest during the San Francisco 2019 pen show. This journal is made of the paper that won that contest and it was voted best for shading and sheening. Their Takasago Premium Bank Paper was made in conjunction with Mitsubishi Paper Mills. Here you can see the Three Diamonds watermark. Both of these papers are included in their new fountain pen friendly paper collection. This is different from their old one. I did a quick comparison between these two papers, Tomoa River and Clairefontaine. 
I wanted to use this Claire Fontaine journal as kind of a standard for other people that haven't tried a lot of Japanese papers. I purchased this beautiful journal at Goulet's and I used 12 different kinds of ink. I only did Q-tip um, swab comparisons on two different kinds of paper, the bank paper and Tomoa River. For Q-tip swabs, the ink on the bank paper looks a little bit flatter than on Tomoa River. Of the four papers, the bank paper had the most interesting sheen. Scribo Cosmico ink is a big sheener, but what was different on the bank paper is that it kind of pooled up a little bit more, so there was like sheen and non-sheen parts. Here on Tomoa River, it's just like flat red sheen, and it's kind of hard to see the actual color of the ink. Of the four papers, the bank paper was the smoothest. Here I wrote with a platinum blazer with Tono and Lim's Iolite ink, and it felt like the ink was being just pulled from the pen. It was so smooth. With Tono and Lim's pumpkin ink, the Cosmo note showed the green sheen the most. Tomoa River and Bank Paper were the next, and Claire Fontaine looked like just a normal orange. This Takasago Premium Bank Paper is a lot more sturdy, and the show through is not as bad as on Tomoa River. It rivals Claire Fontaine on the lack of show through. One of the shortcomings of Tomoa River is when you press hard to write, you get what I call the bumpies on the back side and sometimes on the next piece of paper too. You don't get that with the bank paper as much. And lastly, this is a piece of ocean jasper. I do a lot of my filming on rocks, being inky rocks. And I usually use Tomoa River paper, but one day I used another kind of paper and splashed ink on it and it came through and stained a spot here on my rock. So I did a little experiment where I pooled up some ink and let it sit there for about an hour and it didn't go through. So if you do a lot of like splotch tests or things like that, really heavy ink application, this bank paper will hold up to it. I really like the Cosmo Note Journal, but I absolutely love the new Takasago Premium Bank Paper. Expect your inks to behave a little bit differently on this paper than Tomoa River. And if you like Claire Fontaine, but you don't like Tomoa River, this bank paper may be a Japanese paper you may want to try. Shigure Ink now carries both of these papers, and if some industrious person will take that bank paper and make A5 size notebooks out of it, I'll definitely buy a couple. Shokido makes these laser engraved pressed wood boxes called ink books to hold Tamiya sample bottles. He came with a greatly expanded catalog. These hold Tono and Lim's inks. There's some that hold eye paper inks, some now that hold the J. Urban traditional bottle and the Sailor traditional vase type bottle. Here's an ink book that holds eye paper bottles in their boxes, and they're also the maker of the ink candle. I show a few of those and gave some away on my Instagram. This one is called a card book and holds your ink swatches that are on business size cards. You can see in the background there's the Sailor Studio ink book also. He also came with a tape book to hold your washi tapes and then in the background you can see it holds color bar inks in that one. Toya Oka brought a lot more of their beautiful handcrafted alder wood pen cases. They had a lot more than they did last year. This is their 40 pen four level pen box with three drawers and then the top level is open with a glass lid. Each level holds 10 pens. Now I need some pens to fill this box. They also brought these one layer four pen pen boxes and six pen pen trays. Glass pens had a strong presence at the show. There were at least four different glass pen companies and then several of the stationery companies also carried glass pens. This is Kawanishi glass and by then I had run out of money and couldn't afford a glass pen, 
but instead I got a glass pen holder. This one is their trademark milky swirls inside of the glass. Tag Stationery brought their Kyoto inks, some pens, some dip pens, and their very popular ink puddles. They also brought their mini ink bottle set, the winter version. The winter version has these cool colors and I'll talk about this more in my upcoming video called Crazy Inks. It seems like this year's show was paper heavy and Kobe Ha was here from Kobe. They are the makers of the famous Graffilo paper. An interesting find this year was their 2021 monthly calendar. It's a fountain pen friendly paper and most monthly calendars are like from Hallmark or something are kind of glossy and difficult to write on, but this was a real exception. They also had their Ciro journal, which is basically Graffilo paper in a notebook. It comes with a piece of blotting paper it's stitched together and lays flat, but the nice thing about it is that it has these very thin white lines or indentations almost that after you write in it, you can't even tell the lines were there. I believe this notebook and a straight Graffilo notebook is available on jet pens. Leon was there with KWZ, Diamine, and Venta inks, along with some glass pens. Twisby was there, but didn't bring the VAC 700R Iris. Taylor was there with their Gajillion Studio inks. And Mita-san Shoto brought their Kiriko Cut glass inks. Along with these interesting color liquid filled glass pens. And Mr. Pilot was about the only person repping the vintage pen people. Overall, this was a conscientiously held and successful pen show. As to be expected, there was also a lot of glass pens, and what was unexpected was how many paper choices there were. And a very dangerous element was that most of the vendors now took credit cards. Please come to Tokyo International Pen Show 2021. I think you better listen to Takeya Man. Maybe we'll see you at next year's show. If you liked or found this video useful, I'd appreciate a like and a subscribe. And as for administrative stuff, I waited about a month and no one claimed the pumpkin pen, so I'm declaring a new winner. It's Jamarelby. Please contact me on my IG messages or on the email that's listed on my about page. Thanks and congratulations. Thank you.